For our Hobbit deck this round, we're going to go ahead and play the Hobbit Pony onto Sam. Since he's a leadership hero, he'll get plus one defense. We'll also play Rosie Cotton. She will use both of Sam's resources, and then we're going to use one of Frodo's resources to throw the Mithril Shirt onto him. He'll have plus one defense then, and plus one health. For the Rohan deck, we'll go ahead and play Armored Destrier. We'll place that on Grim Bjorn. He has now two restricted items, can't have any more. And then we'll have our Bjorning Skin Changer. We'll pay two of Grim Bjorn's three resources for that, so that we can have him out and change him during the combat phase into Bjorn. <laughs> Sweet. We currently have seven threat in the staging area. So what I think I'm going to do for questing this round is Pippin for two and Frodo for four. We can send both of those two later, and Rosie can always be added to anyone at any point. We'll then send the Skin Changer for five. We'll send Elf Helm for seven and Gildor for a total of ten. Ten to seven. <laughs> Let's see how we do. Our first thing we have is the Tree Cover or Tree Crowned Hill. While Tree Cone Hill is the active location, each enemy gets minus one threat. Cool, uh, but it's not active. That adds three threat to the staging area. And our second one is, wow, the Great Varg creature, uh, Great Varg Chief. Oh, has 30 engagement costs. Cannot have attachments for threat. Oh, well, I just added a total of seven threat to the staging area. <laughs> Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We quested only for 10, definitely sending Mary and Pippin. So that's four, five, six, seven. So that puts us at 17. And then we're going to add Rosie for a total of 19. Our difference of 19 to 14 means we placed five progress, just enough to get through the Redhorn Foothills. The Redhorn Foothills says when Redhorn Foothills is explored, each player must discard X cards from their hand uh, by random. And X is the number of damage here, no damage. Whew, so we don't have to worry about that. During our travel phase, I think we got to go to the tree-covered hill. Let's get this thing out of here. So it says here, while the tree-covered hill is the active location, each enemy gets minus one threat. So that means that those two Hounds of Sauron, yeah, they're zeros right now. So that's going to help us hopefully quest through, because we're kind of having a hard time with that. I'm not having enough uh, willpower yet. We do have three enemies in the staging area. These guys' engagement costs are 45, 40, 35, plus four, so 39, thanks to Pippin. So these guys won't for sure engage. This great Varg chief also is 34. <laughs> Our Rohan deck is 32. But here's the thing. They're just going to get more annoying, so I think I'm going to engage one of them. The question is, which one? Do I just pull one of these guys out so I can get rid of them, or do I take the great Varg chief? I didn't read this to you. But after the Great Varg Chief engages you, discard cards from the encounter deck until a Varg enemy is discarded and put that enemy engaged with you. That means we'd place two damage immediately onto the active location. I don't really want to do that, but it's it's never going to be a good time. So I, I kind of feel like we just should do it. <laughs> so I'm going to have the Rohan deck. Oh, but I could do the Hobbit deck. If I did the Hobbit deck, they could draw a card... Yeah, but mm, let me think about this. You know, Grimbjorn can't even one-shot this Varg Chief, so I think it's got to be the Rohan deck. So we're going to have the Rohan deck go ahead and engage this great Varg Chief, and then we'll go ahead and find another Varg to be engaged with him. And that means we're placing two damage on the active location. Let's go digging for a Varg. Uh, oh, that's a great card to discard. That one also doesn't look good. Okay, still no. Okay, here's a Varg. And, of course, it's going to add more damage. Wonderful. Moving into the combat phase, first thing we'll do is place our shadow cards. But then we'll do our combat action. Our Bjorning Skin Changer will discard itself and change into Bjorn. <laughs> yes. Now, you guys haven't seen Bjorn yet because he's new. Bjorn has the action that says he gains plus five attack until the end of the phase. At the end of the phase in which you trigger this effect, you have to shuffle him back into your deck. He basically turns into bear form, does a big attack, and then gets put back into your deck. Just so you guys know from a lore standpoint, he is the father of Grimbjorn. So we got father-son working side by side. <laughs> I love it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with Grimbjorn the old. He is going to exhaust to defend against the Great Varg. But then he's going to use his armor Destrier to ready himself and discard the shadow card that's on this Howling Varg. Okay, awesome. Wasn't anything anyways, but at least we got rid of it. 
This great Varg chief is attacking for five. Grimbjorn the Old has five defense. So let's see. No shadow effect. Sweet. So he attacks for five, doesn't do anything. Response time. Grimbjorn then gets to attack with six. He does get to minus the two shields. So he does five whopping points of damage to that Varg chief. Can take him out, but can sure as that get him close. <laughs> okay, now we have the Howling Varg, though. The Howling Varg is going to be able to attack. I think what I'm going to do is have, uh, let's see. Yeah, what do I want to do? Yeah, I think this is the best idea. We are going to have Bjorn defend. He's got three armor. This will place one point of damage on the active location, so it now has three damage on it, which is just great. But because Bjorn attacks for th or, um, defends for three and the Howling Varg attacks for three, doesn't do anything. Grimbjorn now is ready. He has two, four, six total attack, and Gildor is ready here with his awesome two attack. <laughs> So with the six attack we have from Grimbjorn, we're going to get rid of the Howling Varg. I mean, I'd love to get rid of the Varg Chief, but this is going to keep putting uh, damage on the active location. And we remember, we have to travel every phase. We can't leave uh, them. Uh, we can't leave locations sitting out in the staging area. The quest card doesn't allow it. Gildor now could attack, but he only has two attack. He can't even get through the shield of the Varg Chief. So we're just going to have to deal with the Varg Chief next round. With this, I think we're going to go ahead and end the round. So the Hobbit Dex threat will move up to 23. Yeah, I'm not using Mary's ability yet. I can't. And the Rohan deck moves up to 33. Let's go ahead and refresh. We have now generated resources, and let's go ahead and draw cards. Oh, we have another sneak attack, and that Fireside Song is back. I totally forgot, you guys. Grimbjorn has A-Rod. Totally awesome he has A-Rod, because A-Rod lets us place progress on locations. Let's go ahead and keep placing progress on Ergion. As long as Grimbjorn can defeat an enemy each round, he will be able to get rid of this in two rounds. What we're going to play this round is nice and simple. We're going to play Faramir with our Rohan deck. He is also new, so he has two willpower, but he has an action where we can exhaust Faramir to choose a player. Each character controlled by that player gets plus one willpower until the end of the phase. Yeah. That will be nice. And we're going to play Fireside Song on Mary. So Fire, uh, Mary will have plus one willpower. For questing this round, we'll start with Gildor for three, Elfhelm for five, Frodo for seven. We can always do Faramir as an action later. So I'm going to leave him out for now. These decks are kind of insane, you guys, because all I'm going to add is a total of nine for Pippin because Sam and Mary and Rosie can all be added later. <laughs> So cool. The good thing about the location that we're at is all enemies get minus one threat. So we actually only have five threat in the staging area for now. Let's go ahead and reveal. So this is for the Rohan deck and it's apparel. When revealed, exhaust a hero you control or engage Sirbin the Dunland. Well, this guy is quite annoying. We're going to go ahead and engage him. We will have to place another point of damage on the active location. And we're going to have to reveal an additional encounter card because he has engaged a player. So this is still for the Rohan deck. We have another er Ergion uh, for our location. And wonderful, we have Lure of the Ring. So this is for the Hobbit deck. Peril and Search. Attached to a non-ring hero in play. Counts as a condition attachment with the text. After the one ring exhausts, raise each player set by one and reduce the attached hero's questing to zero. I think... I think this is a great time to use Frodo and his resource. So we're going to do that. We'll use Frodo and his resource. We'll exhaust the one ring. And let's shuffle that guy back in. I don't want to deal with him right now. I mean, we'd have to redraw a new card anyways. So let's get that out of there. What do you, what do you guys think? Okay, that looks good. Let's draw this one instead. <laughs> I, I thought I shuffled. <laughs> okay, let's see. I can uh, attach it to a non... Uh, a non-ring hero. So that could be anybody. I guess, why don't we put it on Grimbjorn? Because having his willpower at zero isn't really going to make a difference. So we'll put it on Grimbjorn. So he is lusting for the ring, which actually totally makes thematic sense because he's the most, the most powerful here. And then we'll draw this one when revealed. Place three damage on the active location. Are you serious? That means now the active location has seven damage on it. We quested for a total of nine. We have three, four, five, six, seven, eight out here. So that actually only places one progress. 
I'm going to add a little bit more, but not a lot. I don't actually want to complete this location this round. I think what I'm going to do is exhaust Sam to add four more. So that puts us at 13 to 8. That places 5 progress. That doesn't complete the location, but that's actually what I want. The reason that I want this is you need to read what this says here. As a group, when this is explored, we need to exhaust X characters in play. X is the number of damage here. I would need to exhaust seven characters. That is all the characters I have out that are not exhausted currently. Then I have two enemies that are attacking. One, I could totally take undefended, be fine. But that Great Varg attacks for five. That could kill a hero. I mean, I know I have Grim Bjorn, but I don't have any healing out right now. I'm not ready for it. <laughs> so instead, I'm just going to place five progress on here. I need six, and then maybe next round I can deal with it, but this will also allow me to kill some enemies. Moving to the engagement phase, we have two Hounds of Sauron, but their threat right now is only at like 43. But I'm going to have the Hobbit deck optionally engage one, so Sam will ready and we get to draw a card. And we have the Master of the Forge. That will be really helpful, I think. We'll now move to the combat phase. The Great Varg Chief will get one. This Blasted Dunlin Bird will get one. And then that uh, Hound of Sauron over there will also take one. So the Great Varg Chief is going to attack. Grimbjorn is here. He is going to defend. And then he'll use his uh, Armor Destrier to ready himself and discard this Shadow card. So this one's Toast. That's great. And let's see what the Great Varg Chief has. Nothing. Awesome. So he attacks for five, doesn't do anything. We'll use Grimbjorn's resource. He attacks for six, minus two shield. This uh, great Varg chief is toast. And then we will also place another progress on that um, Agarion location. We only need one more and that'll actually be completed. But I did, I do want to mention, I needed to place an eighth damage on that location because I engaged another enemy. Jeez. <laughs> Now this bird is also going to attack, and I think this time I'm going to go undefended. So I'll take one point of damage, and I'll place that on Elf Helm. No problem. We'll then have the Hound of Sauron attack. We'll use Grimbjorn to defend, because he is ready. And we will draw this or flip this over. It says, undefended damage from this attack must be assigned to the active location. No undefended attack. Whew. Uh, he's only attacking for four. Grimbjorn's defense is five. Nothing happens there. Now, since we're over here, I will just have Treebeard here attack for four, takes out this creature. Bjorn himself over here will go ahead and take out this creature as well. So we've cleared out all the enemies. Thank goodness. Well, that felt like a pretty productive round. Let's go ahead and end it. We'll uh, move resources. We're now at 34 threat for our Rohan deck and 24 threat for our Hobbit deck. We've generated resources. Let's go ahead and draw our cards. And we have a Warden of Healing and a Dunedain Mark. For our Hobbit deck during the planning phase, we'll play our Master of the Forge and the Warden of Healing. First thing we'll do is exhaust the Warden of Healing. We'll heal the one point of damage we put on Elf Helm and one point of damage that we have on Treebeard. Treebeard only has one damage left. Then we'll also exhaust the Master of the Forge so we can draw five cards. One, two, three, four, five. And we have, okay, these are our three attachments. Uh, the Unexpected Courage, absolutely. I have two Merry Resources, so I'm going to pay that. That's going to go on to Grimbjorn. Now we're talking. The two cards we're going to play for the Rohan deck is the Dunedain Mark. That's going to put Grimbjorn to seven attack. And then we will also have the Errant Rider. And that means that we'll be able to move resources around. I'm going to wait this round to use him because I've used all of my non-Grimbjorn resources. But going forward, I can now start pushing even Frodo resources when he is one of our heroes over to Grimbjorn so he can do more response attacks. I think we're ready to go to the next quest card. What do you guys think? <laughs> we'll see, I guess, because that location that we have, it's going to hurt us. But it is what it is. We've got two for questing here, plus two from Treebeard, so that's four, plus two here from Pippin. Oh, I forgot to take that off from last time. So that's six. Then we'll add Gildor for seven, eight, nine, and Elf Helm for ten, eleven. Right now, it is eleven to eight. Let's go ahead and draw our cards. We've got another Ergarion. I do not like those locations. And we have the Hills of Holland. While it's the active location, 
Uh, it, okay, don't have to worry about that. It's not the active location. Our total threat in the staging area is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's still 0. So 13 to 11. We'll go ahead and add Sam for 4. Pippin for 3. Uh, not Pippin, that's Mary. Mary for 3. We'll use Rosie to add 2 to that. And then why don't we use Faramir to add plus one for our Hobbit deck, each of our uh, characters that are questing. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five. Five more as well. And when I said five, I actually mean six, because I can't count. Because <laughs> we've got Frodo, Rosie, Treebeard, Mary, Sam, and Pippin. That's six. That means we quested for a total of 27, you guys. That's totally insane. That will push us through, I think. This does mean, though, because we're progressing through this location, we have to exhaust seven characters. Well, that's every single character we have on the board. So all of our characters are now exhausted. Suddenly, Aragorn leapt to his feet. How the wind howls, he cries. It is howling with wolf voices. The Vargs have come west of the mountains. I could have told you that. We just fought the great Varg king, or whatever he is. <laughs> when revealed... Each player searches the encounter deck and discard pile for an enemy and adds it to the staging area. One of those enemies must be a great Varg chief. Yeah, so he's going to come right back. So here we go. We've got the great Varg chief and the howling Varg that are now being added to the staging area. Man, we just took him out. <laughs> the fellowship is being hunted by ravenous Vargs. During the travel phase, the players must travel to a location if able. After a location enters play, place one damage on it. So that's basically going to guarantee these uh, effects are going to take place. And we still have after an enemy engages a player, place one damage on the active location. And we need 12 progress. Yeah, we got to start pushing. I think we're going to go ahead and travel this time to the hills of Holland because this is going to give every enemy plus five engagement cost. But we will have to raise our threat by one for each damage placed here. Here we have our three enemies that are in the staging area. This Hound of Sauron has 50, 45, 40, 35, plus 4, so 39. That would not engage anybody. This Howling Varg has 42, and this uh, Great Varg Chief has 34 as its engagement cost. 34 means that we have to engage him with the Rohan deck at least because the Rohan deck has 34 threat. So I think I'm going to leave these two, but we are going to engage the great Varg chief. That is going to mean our first point of damage is placed on that location. We also need not to forget what the great Varg chief's ability is. We will have to put a pl uh, into play an enemy from the encounter deck. We have our encounter deck here. Let's keep discarding until we find an enemy. Oh, okay. So we also have a Hound of Sauron engaged with us. The only nice thing is we only have one more card in the uh, encounter deck. That means only one creature will actually get this. And you usually start with the highest engagement cost card. That's the Hound of Sauron. So we'll place that on him. Currently, everyone is exhausted, but I did just put Unexpected Courage on Grimbjorn. That's the whole reason why I did that. So we are going to ready him. We're going to have the Great Varg Chief attack, and we'll exhaust Grimbjorn the Old. We'll then use his Armor Destrier to ready him and discard this Shadow card. Sweet. That doesn't even happen. And now we can spend one resource to attack him for seven. He gets minus two shield. We just took out the Great Varg Chief. Boom. <laughs> then we'll have the Hound of Sauron attack, attacks Grimbjorn. Grimbjorn will defend, spend one resource to do his attack, and he just took out the, the Hound of Sauron. And since he defeated an enemy, we'll go ahead and exhaust a rod so we can go ahead and place the fourth progress on this location. And so this location finally is out of the staging area. Now that Grimbjorn has finished doing his beast mode, <laughs> let's go ahead and end the round. We'll increase threat 35 now for our Rohan deck and 25 for our Hobbit deck. We have generated resources. Let's go ahead and draw our cards. We have Bill the Pony and Bulwark of the West. For our Rohan deck, we're going to start by using our Errant Rider's ability. We're going to move one of Frodo's resources over to Grimbjorn. Then we're going to use one of Grimbjorn's resources to put out the Secret Vigil. It can be attached to an enemy. It reduces their threat by one, but when we defeat that enemy or that enemy leaves play, we get to reduce our threat by whatever that enemy's printed threat is. We're going to go ahead and place that onto the Howling Varg. Uh, we can each reduce our threat by two. I mean, it's not great, but it's better than nothing. 
So he's out in the staging area. And he right now has minus one threat. So it'll make it easier for us to quest. For the Hobbit deck, you better believe it. Master of the Forge. One of my favorite cards in the game. Oh, we can get... Ooh, resourceful. Oh, but Song of Travel, that can get us more questing if we put that on Mary. Mary's already blue, but hey, I, I like questing. Or we could put that actually on Sam, and he gets plus one, and his resources become blue. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to grab the Song of Travel. I don't feel like we need a lot of additional health right now or anything. We'll play the Song of Travel out on Sam. So Sam gets plus one willpower, and now his resources are considered blue. And then Build a Pony can come out for free. To start the quest phase, the first thing we're going to do is play Sneak Attack. We're going to go ahead and bring out Gandalf, and we're going to reduce our threat by 5. So our Rohan deck now only has 30 threat. That feels great. <laughs> and we have Gandalf out for this round for questing. Because like I said, I want to push. We need a total of 16 progress to be able to get to the next quest card. On the Rohan side, we will quest for 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10... 11. We can always add him later. I need to save these two for attacking and defending. We'll then send Bill for 12, Treebeard for 13, 14, and Pippin for 15, 16. There's a total of 10 threat in the staging area right now. So this first card is for the Rohan deck. We have Apparel. When revealed, either the Varg enemy in the staging area with the highest engagement cost attacks you or each Varg enemy gets minus 20 engagement, 20 engagement cost. Oh, come on. Attack me. Heck yeah. This is actually kind of nice because I don't have to engage this enemy to defeat it, thanks to Grimbjorn. So we'll go ahead and have the, hand, the Hound of Sauron because its engagement cost, there's only two enemies out, is 40. And the other one that we have is the Howling Varg, and uh, he's 38. So he'll make an immediate attack. Grimbjorn will exhaust. And I'm not going to use, I'm, I'll probably use Unexpected Courage because I want to use Armor Destrier later potentially. So he's attacking for four. We have shields of five. And we have attacking against plus one. If this destroys a character, place one damage on the active location. Nope. This is four plus one is five. Doesn't even do any damage to Grimbjorn. Grimbjorn will then use his resource so he can do his response and he'll attack for seven no armor this guy is gone we'll then exhaust a rod to go ahead and place one progress on <laughs> these uh the next agarion location Oop, that's not a progress token here we go i just i don't want to go to these locations because they make us discard allies okay that was pretty good that totally allowed us to discard uh, a threat in the staging area. <laughs> All right, what's our second one? No, are you serious? This guy will not leave us alone. The Great Varg Chief is back. Oh, four threat, you guys. He's just so annoying. We quested for 16. What we have here is 3, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. We're only placing two progress for now. That's gonna change. We'll exhaust the Hobbit Pony and Sam to add five more. That puts us to 21. Then we will exhaust the Hobbit Pony and Mary to add one, two, three, four more. So that puts us up to 25. Then we'll go ahead and use Rosie. Rosie's action here, we can add her willpower to any Hobbit. So we'll move that up to 27. Then what we'll do is we'll exhaust Faramir over here, and he will choose a player, which will be the Hobbit player, and each player controlled by that player gets plus one willpower to the end of the phase. So Bill will add one, two, three, four, five, six more to our 27. That will put us to 33. And I forgot about the secret vigil, so it's 33 to 13, not 14. So we just placed 20 progress. With 20, 12 plus 4 is 16. We're good. We have completed and we'll move on to the next quest card. But this says here, when Hills of Holland is explored, each player raises a threat by 1 for each damage here. So that will put the Hobbit deck all the way up to 26. And the Rohan deck will go back up to 31. The Gates of Moria. Pursued by evil Vargs and fell weather, the Company of the Ring decides to enter the Mines of Moria. But as they seek the hidden gate, a foul creature seizes the ring bear with one of its many groping arms. When revealed, make Doors of Durin the active location. Add 
Watch her in the water to the staging area. Discard all tokens from the ring bear and place it and every card attached to it face down underneath the Watcher in the Water. Here we have the Watcher in the Water. The Watcher in the Water is indestructible, immune to player card effects, so we can we can use our response for Grimbjorn to attack, but he does not get to reduce the shield. After placing the six damage here, the first player takes control of the ring bear, uh, exhausted with one damage on it. Okay. The Doors of Durin, immune to player card effects. Progress must be placed on each other active location before it can be placed here. I'll explain that in a second. Progress cannot be placed here unless the first player controls the ring bear. So we have to first take care of the Watcher in the water, or at least get six damage on him, and then we can place progress on the Doors of Durin. If there are nine damage tokens here, the players lose the game. Oh, we don't have a ton of time either. Oh my goodness. So I'm going to go ahead and take Frodo here, and I'm going to put him underneath the Watcher in the Water. He's been captured. If you've seen the movie, you can blame the hobbits for throwing rocks. If you've read the book, you can blame Boromir for throwing rocks into the water and waking the Watcher in the Water. We can see here now there can be two active locations. During the travel phase, the players must travel to a location if able. After an enemy engages, the player place one damage on each active location. So every time an enemy engages somebody, <laughs> oh, that's insane. It does say here, though, if the doors of Durn is explored, the players win the game. During our travel phase, we'll go ahead and have our second location be the Hills of Holland. That means that every enemy gets plus five engagement cost. That means we don't have to engage that uh, Varg chief if we don't want to. The only reason I don't want to is I don't want to be placing damage tokens on the door, <laughs> the Durin's door. So we'll, we'll see what we decide. Here we have the three enemies in the staging area. The Great Varg Chief has 33 as its engagement cost, and right now our Rohan deck is only at 31 damage, or 31 threat. The uh, Howling Varg has 41 as its engagement cost, and the Watcher is considered to be engaged with each player. So I, I don't think that does anything to the uh, quest card because it's always just sitting out in the staging area but also engaged with each player. So I don't think I'm going to engage either one of those. I think we'll, we can manage the threat. We've got lots of, of questing. I think instead we're going to focus on trying to just do the six points of damage on uh, the Watcher in the Water so that we can progress through Durin's Door. I don't want to forget, I have to place Gandalf back into my hand. So he is no longer out in play. So the only thing that's left for this round is to have this Watcher in the Water attack. So... Our first player this round is the Rohan deck. So he's going to attack the Rohan character. Grimbjorn will definitely defend. He will use his unexpected courage to ready himself. He will then defend. He has a total of five defense. So he's going to start taking damage, you guys, because this, this guy attacks for at least six, right? Yeah. Okay, let's see what the shadow card is. The attacking enemy makes an additional attack after this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so he attacks for six. That means Grimbjorn the Old takes one point of damage. Now, he's going to use his armor Destrier, so at least he's ready, so he can defend again. And he's going to spend one of his uh, resources so he can attack back. He attacks for seven, but there's five uh, points of armor, so it only does two points of damage to the Watcher in the Water. But that's actually okay. We just need to get six on this guy. So we've got two. Let's go ahead and draw another shadow card for the additional attack. Place that here. And we will defend again with Grimbjorn. <laughs> this time we have no more ways of readying him. We have no uh, shadow effect. So that means Grimbjorn takes another point of damage. That's damage number two. But he will do his response. He'll use his resource. He attacks for seven. That will place another two points of damage on the Watcher in the Water. So we just need two more points of damage on him. Before our Hobbit deck goes to defending, we're going to use our Warden of Healing. We are going to heal up Treebeard by one and Grimbjorn by one. Okay? Then we're going to spend two resources from Treebeard so he can go ahead and ready himself to defend against this Watcher in the Water. Treebeard has three defense. This Watcher in the Water is attacking for six. We have no shadow effect. So Treebeard takes three points of damage. Fortunately, he has five health, so he can take that. <laughs> Just barely. Now, though, I think it's time for Bjorn. Bjorn is going to go ahead and use his action. He's going to gain plus five attack, so his attack is eight. 
Then we'll also add Gildor for two. That's ten. That means we get to place five more points of damage on this um, Watcher in the Water. And now we have more than six points of damage on him. So that means we get Frodo back already. That means we just got to push through questing and we can maybe win the game next round, potentially. Frodo, though, is back and ready to go. He does have one point of damage on him, but don't forget he has his Mithril shirt, so he has plus one health and plus one shield. Our final action before ending the round is we're going to play Bulwark of the West. This allows us to discard an ally we control to discard a condition attachment. I do not want this Lure of the Ring. I waited until we reshuffled the deck. Now I can discard it, but I will lose the Aaron Rider. Well, I would say we were pretty much ready for that Watcher in the Water. We did nine points of damage to him. That's pretty sweet. Let's go ahead and end the round. Our uh, Rohan deck will move up to 32 threat. Our Hobbit deck will move up to 27 threat. Let's refresh and generate some resources. We've generated resources, and let's go ahead and draw cards. And we have the Song of Hope and Cram. Nice. Starting with our Hobbit deck, the first thing we'll do is exhaust our Warden of Healing so we can heal one damage from Treebeard, so he only has two, and one damage from Grimbjorn, so he's fully healed. Then we'll exhaust Master of the Forge. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see what we have. Oh, we have another Fireside. Yeah, Fireside Song. Let's go ahead and get that. Let's just blow it out on willpower. I think we have to do it. We're going to place the Song of Hope and Fireside Song on to Sam. Sam will then have three songs on him, so that's plus three willpower. His willpower will be three, four, five, six, seven, eight for one character. <laughs> We're not going to take any chances here. We're going to play Gandalf using three resources from Gildor and Elfhelm, two from Grimbjorn. We're going to hard cast him. We're going to deal four damage to an enemy. We're going to deal four damage to the Howling Vargs. We get to reduce our threat now by two for each. So the Rohan deck will go back down to 30, and the Hobbit deck will move down to 25. Then we'll go ahead and put Cram on Grimbjorn, just so he has another way that he can ready. Let's see if we can do this, okay? We're going to go ahead and start questing. Gildor for three, Elfhelm for five. We're going to exhaust Faramir and add plus one to all of the willpower of the Hobbit deck. So we're still only at five, plus four is nine. We'll then add Bill for 10, 11, Rosie for 12, 13, 14, Treebeard for 15, 16, 17, Mary for 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. We just added nine more here for 31. We'll add two more for Pippin. That's 33. Oh, actually, that's 34 because it's plus one. And I had Frodo away over here. So then we'll add three more for 34. 34. <laughs> Come on, that's got to be enough. We'll go ahead and start drawing. And this is for the Hobbit deck. When revealed, place three damage on each active location. That just placed six uh, damage. <laughs> three on the door and three on the hills. Oh, my goodness. Our second card will be Bitter Cold. Oh, we finally got our first weather card. When revealed, each player must choose either discard each ally he controls or raise his threat by one for each ally he controls. Yeah, we're going to raise threat. <laughs> So our Hobbit deck will raise threat by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Whew, it goes all the way up to 30. And then our Rohan deck will just go by 2. 32. Not bad. In the staging area, we have 5 plus 4 is 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 15 total threat. But we quested for 34. That means we get to place 19 total progress. We get to place 4 here and 9 here. We've just won the game as long as no one threats out. When this is explored, raise your threat by one for each damage. So we'd each raise our threat. We'd only be at 35 for the Rohan deck and 33 for the Hobbit deck. Whew. But that means we just won the game. If Lust for the Ring is attached to a hero, the players have earned that burden. Yes! I totally got rid of that. <laughs> That's why I waited until the encounter deck was fully uh, used. Once it was fully used, then I went ahead and discarded it, so that way I knew I wasn't going to draw it. did not want to draw it right at the end there. Thank goodness. Even if that great Varg Chief wouldn't leave us alone. 
They were just in time. Sam and Frodo were only a few steps up, and Gandalf had just begun to climb, when the groping tentacles writhed across the narrow shore and fingered the cliff wall in the doors. One came wriggling over the threshold, glistening in the starlight. Gandalf turned and passed. If he was considering what word would close the gate again from within, there was no need. Many coiling arms seized the doors on either side, and with horrible strength, swung them round with a shattering echo, they slammed, and all light was lost. Well, you guys, that was Quest 4 in the books. Feels pretty good. Uh, I hope you guys liked this deck. I really like the changes. I am feeling like I need more red resources, but I think we'll still be okay. But having Bjorn in there, getting that plus five attack, I mean, that allowed us to win in this round. We would have had to last at least one, if not two more rounds, if we had not had him. So, And then I also put in Sneak Attack with Gandalf. Totally worth it. Really, really versatile and really useful. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. I will see you at the next stop. <laughs>